So Chopper Fisher here and today we're going to finish wrapping up the final touches on this TC Bros frame, mount this chain tensioner that I made, and uh, get you up to date. It's been a while. So as you can see here, my homie Joel hooked it up with a great parts motor. It's got the Hughes hand-built PMA system on it. Um, pretty much why I bought it. Other than that, the cam chain guides are just as toast as the one I got normally. Which is still, which is still in the bike. And I'm gonna keep that in the bike until I mount this chain tensioner. And then we can weld off all the rest of the frame. I'll show you what's on the frame. So the way that TC Bros makes their frame, you have the main mounting points as you've seen in my previous video. And then this crossbar, they only tack weld, making it adjustable so that way you can, you know, fit the seat wherever you want it, um, depending on what type of seat you have. I actually kept it right where they put it um, because I kind of like the position of it. I like the, the even gap that I had on both sides. Then I got to finish welding off the fender mounts that I made. And then the same thing down here. This bottom bracket, they only tack weld. But now I don't know what I'm going to do with this battery box because I got the PMA system so I might be going batteryless. Maybe I'll still mount that and use it as like tool storage or electronic uh, wiring crap storage. I don't know yet. Also since the last episode, I've got these new risers. They're three inch risers, one inch pullbacks. I put them on backwards because I just, I liked the way that it looked with the bars going straight up with that one inch uh, pitch there. And the homie Loctite, shout out to Loctite, from the Low Life Chopper Podcast, gave me these bars. Um, I believe they were his stock sporty bars. And it's just like, ah, uh, gotta love that stance. So I'm converting to one inch. I got this one inch clutch lever from Lowbrow. Got these grips dirt cheap from Lowbrow. Cheap enough that I bought two sets, so that way I can do the offset colors. Got red, this one's hot. And yeah, this is pretty much the last time you're gonna see this bike together until the final assembly. I'm gonna mount that chain tensioner. I got these crossbars um, already measured out for this one, so I'm not gonna undo that tack weld and move this back bar anyways. I got everything measured out pretty good and fitting exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna put those in place according to wherever I need the chain tensioner. I gotta put the chain back on. And then, I'm gonna pull this damn motor out Finish up with the welds everywhere, and then uh, get it ready for paint. The only thing I don't have is a mount is a mount for the coil, which I'm not using this coil, so I haven't mounted it yet. I'm only going to spray bomb the frame um, black, so that way I can grind anything down and add it or subtract whatever I like or don't like. So it'll be fully customizable without uh, worrying about ruining like a, pow a powder coat or something. But once it's in its final form, once it's in its final form, I, uh, I do plan on powder coating the frame black. So for the chain tension of design, I've decided to go with the open end part of this wrench and I already drew a line there. I'm gonna cut it and mount it on the side so that way it creates a perfect little hook like so for this chain or for this spring. And I'm gonna put a mount on the bottom end of the spring there, so that way this crosses and creates tension to pull this up. It's like magic, I know. So we're gonna start with that. new ground clamp. Pretty sure that was causing some problems with uh, connection. Obviously, you need that when you're welding. Chopper Fisher Shop Rack. I give these out for free at uh, motorcycle events. So, go to them. Get one. Use it as an acetone rag and then catch it on fire like I do. I'm gonna get this thing mounted, make sure that the, the spring tension, everything's gonna be accurate before I decide to completely shape and finish this thing off. So I think I got the positioning figured out pretty well. Um, there's only so much slack in the chain that I need to take up. This spring is pretty damn tight. You see I still got a slight gap down straight to the bottom. I was gonna go to the base, but I, I don't like that angle. I kinda wanted to go straight down. So I think on the plate here, 
I'm gonna weld the other end of this on here and I'm just gonna use a grinder. I'm gonna slice a slightly open space there, just enough to hook that in there. So that way it'll pull it straight down here and lock her into place. So I got that welded on there, cut a little slit, so that way this little layer right here slips right. I'm gonna flyer on myself, I need to make it a little bit bigger apparently. So now that slips right inside so the spring is replaceable if it were to ever fail. So I've got the uh, chain tension I designed pretty well finalized. I got a sharp mark going here, uh, marking where the base plate's gonna end up being. This back bar here, that's not gonna be there. Um, I'm gonna be building a larger piece going across, more of like a, like a plate platform. And then I'm gonna finish off the weld connecting the two pieces. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna get that thing mounted up so I can pull this motor out and then uh, finish up all the welding on the frame. Sometimes you just gotta go with your gut, as far as style goes. I mean, it would have worked out perfectly. But it looked like shit. I just, I didn't like what I did. So I had this going up flat against the, that back bar, and then I had this curve kind of sticking out past the chain tensioner a little bit, but going with the curves of it. Jesus Christ, try to record here! And I just didn't like how it looked. It just it created like an awkward like gap and then I just envisioned this weird shape and swirls and So uh, I'm gonna do that now instead and hopefully I like it more so I don't have to do this again So for some reason I think this is gonna look better But I have my doubts There's only 12 ways to find out All 12 of them Let's cut it out make it tack weld it See it. Alright, this is it. Mounting the new plate. Think I dig it. We're gonna find out. Whoa! <laughs> Why do I always do that? <laughs> Fucking ass turn rags on fire. <laughs> God damn it! Could've been worse. I can't believe how flammable that shit is. It's crazy. Now as you can see, it would've been a hell of a lot easier if I just did this all with one plate, but I'm going to uh, finish welding off this, uh, these two separate plates and connecting them for the remainder of their lives. Grinding down that weld so that way the chain tensioner here will sit down nice and flesh on top. Then I'm gonna get it aligned, tap the mounting holes, mount it, remove it all. And just like that, it's nighttime. So I got the, the plate that this thing's gonna mount to all uh, welded up. 
uh, it's not done. I gotta finish grinding down some of the welds, but I gotta ground down where this thing's gonna sit nice and flat. So I'm gonna tap these two holes, get this thing mounted, so that way tomorrow, apparently, I can pull this thing apart. So, it's the next day already. Uh, as you can tell, I think I tried to squeeze a little bit too much into one episode. So I'm gonna make a second episode about wrapping up the TC Bros frame. And this episode's pretty much just gonna remain all the work that I did to the chain tensioner. So, I did a little bit more last night uh, as far as tapping the holes in, in the new base plate that I made and in the chain tensioner. So I'm gonna show you where I'm at with that. So I took about seven pins worth of uh, linkage here out of the chain so I could finally have it all set up and to its proper tension, especially to work properly with the new chain tension I built. So this is where I'm at. I ended up going with that little curvy design, which I absolutely love way more than what I had before. Uh, I just need to finish filling in uh, the rest of this with more weld so when I grind it down, it's nice and flesh. Either that or mold it, but I'm more likely to just fill it with metal. Um, the holes came out pretty good and even. I'm very happy with that. I, I think I may or may not change this in the future because I realize once I paste the, uh, paint the frame, I'm going to have to paint that. So I might even make that like a little removable uh, piece that will bolt down on like a plate or something. So that way I can keep that chrome. But overall, that's, uh, that's the design and it works perfect. I drilled the holes on the base plate a little bit larger than the holes in the actual chain tensioner itself so that way I have a little bit of adjustment. Um, hopefully that doesn't create an issue with vibration and it moving but I'm going to lock tight it all into place once I actually start riding it. And it did line up perfectly. I had a little bit of chatter at first. I adjusted it uh, a few different times to get it so that way it's lined up perfectly because you have to be very very precise with something like this. So it doesn't either chew up your sprocket or the chain. But for now I'm going to get ready to start ripping this thing apart and get it down to the bare frame. Uh, Per usual when building a chopper, mounting that chain tensioner was that one thing stopping me from doing everything. So now that I finally got that out of the way, I'm going to wrap this episode up and uh, stay tuned for the next one where I'm going to break into this frame. I'll have it linked at the end of this video, so be sure to click it and subscribe, okay?